um, your source control, the, the, the way you manage source control because you're using Azure Container Apps, that doesn't change either. Whatever is in a single Git repository, you're going to build all of it at the same time. It's going to be the same version. Um, and you're going to you're, you're gonna build it all, test it all together, and then package it up into deployable packages and move it forward. Okay, this is the structure of a build, whether it's a private build or integration build, um, you're going to, you're going to stamp a version number, you're going to create your storage services like the database, you're going to do a compilation, your unit tests, integration tests, and then for your integration build over the top of a private build, you're probably going to do static code analysis, you're going to package the results in a format that that Octopus deploy can handle, and then you're going to publish those out to Azure artifacts. Um, let me touch on when you should be interested in Azure Container Apps in the first place. Um, because you have you have this whole spectrum of where you can host your code. You can have an on-premise data center with physical servers. You can do hosted VMs. You can do a VM in Azure. You could do Azure Container Apps, or you could do Azure SQL or Azure Functions. Now, the reason that Azure Container Apps isn't the furthest to the right is because the furthest to the right would be 100% hands-off, okay? And completely serverless, is 100% hands-off. Azure SQL, that has a serverless mode. Azure Functions, that has a serverless mode where you're just saying, hey, run my code, but I'm not going to back up. I'm not going to monitoring it. Um, Azure Container Apps, you're pulling back just a little bit because you're saying, you know what? I need to have some say about the dependencies that are going to run here. And with Azure SQL, you're just giving it your schema, you're giving it um, that, and it's just running it, and it's it's auto-scaling the database, functions the same way. With Azure Container Apps, you still have to create your container, you still have to own the definition of your container, which is the slice of a Linux operating system, and so there's just a little bit more control that you have. Um, at the same time, there's more constraints. Um, so the further you go to the left, the fewer constraints you are but the more work you have to do. The further you go to the right, the more constraints there are, but the more um, the more you have to release control. Let me give you an example. If your application has a screen that, um, that prints barcodes and, and, and needs a custom font to print barcodes, well, guess what? You're not going to be using Azure Container Apps. You're just not going to be. Um, you're not even going to be using uh, Azure App Service because with the Azure Container App, um, you, you have to have the ability to install a custom Windows font and you have to use one of the services that does support installing a custom Windows font for, for those custom barcode. A lot of those barcode fonts are custom fonts that are not built in. Uh, to the operating system. Okay, so I talked about packaging. Here's the mapping. Um, forget the offline job. That's just th this this code base doesn't have the offline job. But you can have one Visual Studio solution, and if you have an offline job that's just listening for a queue and a Blazor web uh, web assembly application and a database, and then a full system acceptance test, you have four deployable pieces of a single release candidate. All of this would be version 1143, but you have four things to deploy, okay? And so you you push them into Azure Artifacts um, or you can push them into Octopus's, Octopus Deploy's Artifacts store, but Octopus Deploy is only for Octopus. So for your full system test suite, that needs to go in Azure Artifacts so it can be pulled back out inside Azure Pipelines and run those full system tests. So that's how that relationship is. This is a screenshot of Azure Artifacts. This is the feed for the container app. And notice that we have the UI, we have the database, and we have the acceptance test. We have three different NuGet packages. Inside the .UI NuGet package is our Blazor app, is our app settings.json, is all the stuff that's going to go inside that container. Inside the database is our, uh, is our uh, DDL, our data definition language. Um, and that we're not containerizing that. So there's nothing about a container for this. And the acceptance test is just, we're going to run that within unit. There's nothing containers about this. So when we containerize an application, we only containerize the component of our application that is containerizable. And in this case, it's the web application, right? 